perhaps it's interesting to show the final circuit of the test oscillator that I made and published. I had to do, say, a, a few adaptations, but anyway, the circuit does not differ much uh, uh, from the first uh, video that I published, and I will give the link in the text box in the description. Uh, <coughs> I tried to make a kind of amplifier that was not very successful. So the field effect transistor here, uh, the BF256A was perfect, it did the job completely, etc, etc. And here you see the remains of my experiment emitter base collector. I tried to connect a um, NPN transistor to amplify it somewhat, but to amplify the output signal somewhat, but it was not necessary. The whole uh, circuit worked properly <coughs> and it had a very fierce oscillation. I've used again that pancake coil. I want to refer to earlier videos. Uh, that pancake coil has a very high quality factor, but you can surely use this circuit without that uh, more or less a cumbersome pancake coil to make. The schematic. I did a, a few minor changes and this is of course that pancake coil. Here, were, here are all the tabs. The tabs are connected to this bunch of switches. Switch 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and I can switch in the tabs on that uh, pancake coil. The tuning capacitor is 70 picofarad up to 580 picofarad. That was already showed in an earlier video. Uh, of course, this is, say, a very cheap capacitor to do the job. Uh, uh, when you want to make it in a more serious way, uh, you can use uh, not such a capacitor but say a standard tuning capacitor uh, with air between the plates. The field effect transistor the same as earlier uh, published and in fact there's not so much special now. The whole circuit is in fact the same. I made I used, because I wanted to use it as a test oscillator, a 1000 picofarad capacitor, so a 1 nanofarad capacitor to take out the signal. That worked very good, gave more uh, amplitude, etc, etc. And the most important <coughs> thing is that I've used here a switch. I've changed this capacitor. It was in the first schematic 1000 picofarad, so one nanofarad, but now I've uh, it's 470 picofarad and the capacitor that bridges the ape hair coil inductance was made variable so that I could change that capacitor uh, with a switch with three positions to 150 picofarad or 10 nanofarad, that is 10,000 picofarad and 1500 picofarad. And that's what you see here on the front of the test oscillator. That's A, B and C. That gave much more possibilities to get to completely other frequency bands and especially to the lower frequency bands. And I've tested the circuit all over again. Let's look at the schematic for the more or less final time. And 
these are these are the test results. So when you put the switch here to the A or B or C position, uh, you surely have that a uh, capacitor that is bridging the coil in the source lead changed. So when you push this switch for instance here, the first switch or the second switch, you can switch them on and off. You can go to different frequency bands. And these are the test results. So with position A here And then pushing the first coil in. So position one, you get to this frequency band, etc. etc. I will only pan over somewhat and very in a very low manner so that everything is properly visible. And again from a somewhat higher point of view. Perhaps that can also help to make all these values, especially the frequencies uh, that you can reach with this very very simple setup of one field effect transistor, make it visible in a good way. So pen over again. Sometimes it's important to tell the, 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 the circuit doesn't want to oscillate, but it only wants to oscillate when the tuning capacitor is halfway the position. And that means in practice that for almost all of the positions of the switches you have a uh, say. You can completely change the tuning capacitor and you will surely see all kinds of frequencies, sine wave frequencies pop up. But uh, sometimes with certain positions the oscillation uh, only starts when the tuning capacitor is halfway. So anyway, I think that's not a big problem. When you are a radio amateur, you know uh, the properties of radio oscillators, etc. etc. So here you can see, for instance, the different waveforms, and you can surely uh, say use this kind of template and uh, find all these frequencies. I did find them with this simple setup, so in fact nothing can go wrong. That's my idea. So thanks for watching the final schematic. I don't want to make another video about it. It's a, a far, perhaps it's far too much. Sometimes I have some doubts that it it is too much, but anyway, my only aim is say to give simple and good uh, circuits, be it radio circuits, audio circuits, or whatever, that you can make, that everyone can make interested in uh, radio technology. Very, very good waveform in general. There are in general no, almost no distortions visible with this setup.